me to be here today looking into all your glistening faces. No, no, no applause, please. Don't you know it's impolite to listen at somebody's door? Now, my fellow voters of Hooterville, as mayor of this great unincorporated metropolis of Hooterville... Mayor of Hooterville? Mm. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe. And as your mayor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the key to the city. Isn't that the key to the bathroom? It's the only key to the city I could find. Well, this is for the guests. Now, what is all this about the mayor of Hooterville? Well, I just wanted to see how it felt. Well, it couldn't have felt like very much because we don't have a mayor. It's the lack of things like that that makes Hooterville a small town. What do we need a mayor for? To send to the mayor's convention at the state capitol. They wouldn't even know if we weren't there. How's it going to look when Crabwell Corners has their mayor up there and all we've got's an empty seat? <laughs> Uncle Joe, uh, Crabwell Corners does not have a full-time mayor. It's an honorary title. He may be ornery, but they're sending him to the state capitol, all expenses paid, including a free haircut. <laughs> oh, now I understand. That's what you want, a free haircut. I don't need a haircut. <laughs> And we don't need a mayor. Why don't we leave that up to the voters? We don't need a mayor. That's just your opinion, Sam. What about you, Charlie? We don't need a mayor. What do you say, Floyd? Would you mind repeating the question? <laughs> All we have to do is repeat the answer. We don't need a mayor. You know, it's Hooterville's backward attitude that makes Crabwell Corners what it is today. What is it? A bustling community with its own one-way street. Or if we had two streets, we could make one of them one way. Which way? Either way. I'd like to see Crabwell Corners do that. <laughs> the point is, Crabwell Corners has got a mayor and we ain't. Just supposing we decided we wanted a mayor. What kind of man did you have in mind? Well, a man that's smart, a good talker, <laughs> keep well-liked, makes a neat appearance. I accept the nomination. I wasn't talking about you. Well, you're gonna fool me. I was talking about myself. Why should you be mayor? Well, because he wants a trip to the state capitol and a free haircut. No. <laughs> Joe, this is a democracy. If you want to be mayor, you, you gotta be elected. I'm just trying to save the town some money. Then pay for your own haircut. <laughs> if you want to do it the long, involved way with a campaign and everything, that's okay with me. But I'm throwing my hat in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get your hat out of the ring, it's going to cost you $4. <laughs> when I'm mayor, don't you come to me asking for any political favors, because I ain't doing you none. <laughs> Joe is always agitating for something. He won't get elected. He will if nobody runs again him. Yeah, we better put somebody else up. I'm available. <laughs> I mean somebody who can win. <laughs> Very funny. Who are you and what are you doing in Billy Joe's room? <laughs> How many times have I told you to knock before you come in? This is an official visit. Mom wants you to help us clean out number seven. I'm busy. Doing what? <laughs> what is this? This goop. It's not goop. I paid three dollars for that jar. Three dollars? Hollywood mud mask. The mud of the stars. <laughs> it is used on all the Hollywood sound stages. What for? To plug up the cracks? <laughs> to give you an outdoor look indoors. No fooling? <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes. Get down, down. Betty Joe, you sent her to get Billy Joe. Oh, would you go find the money? Sure. Down, I told you. Down, down, down. Down. Betty Joe, Mom says that you should. What's going on? Would you believe that I haven't been outdoors all day? What's this junk? It's not junk. It's goop. Mud of the stars. Read what's on the back of the jar. Hollywood mud contains a new miracle ingredient, as well as all the vitamins needed for a balanced diet. Try a spoonful. <laughs> Put that down. That costs three dollars. All right, so I owe you a quarter. Now, where's Bobby Joe? 
send one to find the other, and they all disappear. <laughs> What's going on here, and what is that? It's the mud of the stars. You paid good money for that? Only three dollars. It's worth it if it'll make Billy Joe beautiful. <laughs> you could have gotten the same thing by digging in the backyard, and you'd have found some fishing worms, too. <laughs> but, Mom, that's not real mud. That's Hollywood mud. And like the brochure said, it refreshes your pores like all out of doors. <laughs> I've never heard such nonsense. You think she'll run? How do we know? Do we ask her? Well, if she won't, I'm still available. Yeah, and you're going to stay that way. Anybody here? Kate? Uh, Mom's upstairs. Bobby Joe. Oh, I'm Betty Joe. What happened to your face? I'm giving myself a beauty treatment. Oh, well, will you tell your mom we'd like to see her a minute? Yes, sir. I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but I think she looked prettier without that stuff on her face. <laughs> mom wants to know, what do you want to see her about? Important business. I'll tell her. Thanks, Betty Joe. I'm Bobby Joe. You know, she's as spitting him as a Betty Joe. Mom will be right down. Uh, thanks, Bobby Joe. I'm Billy Joe. <laughs> what do the girls put that stuff on their faces for? It refreshes their pores like all outdoors. <laughs> I read it in the magazine. What's wrong, fellas? Oh, there's nothing wrong, Kate. Kate? <laughs> That's me. The girls got me mixed up in a beauty treatment. It's good to refresh your pores once in a while. <laughs> you, it's starting to dry. Uh, what is it, fellas? Uh, well, uh, Joe was talking to us about uh, getting a mayor for Hooterville. Well, you like the idea? What's good enough for Crabwell Corners ain't good enough for us. That don't make sense. Well, if it made sense, I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> And uh, we've been talking it over, and we think it'd be a fine thing for the town. Of course, we have to make sure we get just the right candidate. Well, I think Uncle Joe would be fine. We wasn't thinking of Joe. No, we want you to run. Mm hmm Yeah. What about it, Kate? Well, I couldn't possibly do it. I got the whole thing. Well, doggone. Well, well, thank you, you Congratulations. Great. <laughs> Kate, I really thought you'd put up a bigger fight. Yeah. <laughs> Hollywood mud hardened into concrete, and I was saying no, and they were saying congratulations. Well, I think you should have accepted. I don't have time to run for mayor. I don't even have time to run the carpet sweeper. <laughs> but it's such a great honor. Yeah, Mama, if you were elected mayor, it'd be a wonderful thing for our sex. Well, if they're looking for a sexy mayor, they got the wrong woman. <laughs> <laughs> give us a chance to be proud of you. I beg your pardon. I mean, when you're mayor, then we'd have a reason to be proud of you. Well, I, I mean, you're no help. I know what you mean. At least I hope I know what you mean. Mom, you gotta run. Why? Well, think what it would mean to us to be able to tell everybody that our mother is mayor of Hooterville. Especially my geometry teacher. Then maybe she'd give me a good mark. I am not using my office for special favors. Your office? Then you are going to run? W well, well, Congratulations, I... Your Honor. Your Honor, that doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> hey, hey, Uncle Joe, what's the matter? Kate, I got, I got great news for you. I have for you, too. Will you hear? Will you hear mine? I'm, I'm running, running for, for mayor. mayor. <laughs> Your what? I, I thought, thought you, you said... said... I, I did. did. <laughs> Oh. Hey, you can't run. Having a mare was my idea. Yeah, but the fellas asked me. And Mom accepted. Isn't that wonderful? And you can wear Mom's first campaign button. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like the idea? I don't think he does. Well, why not? Because Uncle Joe's running for mayor, too. You're running against Mom? She's running against me. She's making the mistake of her life coming up against an experienced politician like me. Kate, all you're going to end up with is a good drubbing. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, why don't you two have some coffee and talk this over? No, thanks. I don't fraternize with the enemy. Uncle Joe, let's not fight. We won't if you drop out. But I can't. I promise to run. You either drop out or I'm leaving. Oh, you don't have to leave. There 
ain't room for both of us in this hotel. You're on one side, I'm on the other. Remember, a house divided against itself is a split-level house. <laughs> Mom, that's the way Uncle Joe wants it. Kate! Kate, I'm going. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Kate, I just wanted to tell you goodbye. Bye. Sure you don't want to change your mind? No, I don't. Give you a minute to think it over. I've thought it over. Bye. Did you call me? <laughs> No. I think I'll take Geronimo along with me. Oh, you can leave him if you want. I'm not leaving him here with any petticoat politics. <laughs> Did Uncle Joe leave? Uh-huh. Oh, he'll be back. He's left before. Never with his Indian. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure, Kate. You think it should read Kate Bradley for mayor or mayoress? Well, doesn't make any difference. We couldn't change it anyway. That's the only spare sheet I got. I wouldn't have that one if Uncle Joe hadn't moved out. Well, what do you think, Kate? Well, let's give a look here. Ouch! Oh, Selma, I'm sorry. Are you? Well, I didn't do it on purpose. Didn't you? <laughs> Selma, did you get up on the wrong side of your broom this morning? How do you like the sign, Selma? I wasn't aware we were going to elect a mayor. Well, it's in a paper. I didn't read it. It don't come out till tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'd like to know why you're running. I was asked. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you to ask me. If you'd asked me to ask you, I wouldn't have. That's why I didn't ask you to ask me. Now what would you like to play? I'd like to know why you were nominated. There are other women in this town who know a great deal about civic affairs. Yeah. Dar Zippel's too busy. I was talking about myself. You usually are. <laughs> well, you're not going to get my vote. Well, you're going to have to vote for Joe, then. He's running against Kate. Two people in the same family running for the same office? That's unethical. Well, Joe ain't exactly in the same family. He moved out. That's just like you, Kate Bradley, making him move out just because he's running against you. Moving out was Uncle Joe's idea. Are you trying to make me believe that shiftless Joe Carson would turn his back on free room and board? <laughs> you probably threw him out because he might win. I don't think he will. He might, if somebody were to bring your heartlessness to the attention of the voters. I wonder who'd do a nasty thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to myself, that poor Mr. Carson sleeping out in the cold. I got a room at the boarding house. Doing his own laundry. Boy, he's been doing it for me. <laughs> and eating that horrible food at the diner. Speaking of that, could I have another pork chop? <laughs> Joe, you don't mind if I call you Joe, do you? Your pork chops. <laughs> I can't tell you how sorry I feel for the shabby way Kate has treated you, throwing you out just because she wanted to be the mayor. Politics makes strange bed covers. <laughs> Joe, do you really think Kate has a chance of being elected? She's pretty popular, mainly because folks know she's a relative of mine. <laughs> if they knew what she was really like, how she's treated you, I doubt if anybody would vote for her. I wouldn't say anything against Kate. No, but your campaign manager could. I ain't got a campaign manager. You have now. <laughs> present a man who is for good government, lower taxes, and was thrown out of his home by the opposing candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, the next mayor of Hooterville, Joe Carson. 
Thank you, thank you. Friends, I... <laughs> Thelma? Don't worry, Joe, the crowds will get bigger. <laughs> Voters, as I look into your upturned eyes, I... <laughs> Selma? We'll do better when we get out in the heart of the farm country. <laughs> and if I'm elected mayor of Hooterville, I promise you higher prices for your milk. <laughs> She can't vote. <laughs> you fellas ought to be ashamed of yourselves hauling Joe's campaign train. We didn't have no choice. Joe demanded equal time. Besides, Selma paid us. Ten cents a mile. We wouldn't have taken a nickel if she wasn't playing her trombone. Selma will do anything to beat Kate. She's really taking over. She's leading Joe around through the nose like she was married to him. <laughs> Now, there's a chilling thought. <laughs> I always wondered if her husband passed away or if he's just hiding. Did Joe draw in big crowds? Oh, pretty big. Three kids, a cow, two pigs, and a goat. <laughs> he almost had a jackrabbit, except Newt's dog showed up. <laughs> well, Joe ought to come over to Kate's rally tonight and see what a real campaign is like. <laughs> We've heard a lot of good reasons why we should vote for Kate for mayor tonight. And if they weren't enough, here are three more. Good evening, friends and neighbors, too. We're glad to see each one of you. We want her for mayor, and we want her badly. So be sure to vote for the great Kate Bradley. <laughs> Kate is good and fine and true, and that is why we say to you... <laughs> Get a copy of them words, Kate. Wake up, wake up. Cut it out, Kate. I'm not Kate, and get up. Oh, trying to sleep off that supper of yours. What kind of meat was that we had? A pot roast. It's more like roast pot. <laughs> there isn't any time for sleeping. I want you to learn this speech I wrote for you. I don't want to learn any speeches. When I tell you to learn something, you learn it. Selma, you can't talk that way to me. We ain't married. I accept your proposal. <laughs> proposal? Before I'd propose to you, I'd throw myself in Simpson's swamp. Well, if you had no idea of marrying me, why did you let me hire the train and blow my lips to the bone playing the trombone? That don't constitute no proposal of marriage. If you had no intention of marrying me and you allowed me to lay out money for you, you're nothing but a, a, a gigolo. I ain't a gigolo. I accept your proposal. <laughs> Selma, I... Joseph, now that Kate's thrown you out, you're all alone in the world. I got a second cousin in Des Moines. But you're going to need a woman at your side to help your career in politics. Mayor of Hooterville is just a stepping stone to state senator, then the governor. Joe, we're going to go far together. Selma, you're planning on marrying me because I'm going to be mayor. Forget it. Kate's going to win by a landslide. Joe. If you were to be elected mayor, would you promise to marry me? Well, I ain't going to be elected, so it'd be like promising nothing. I accept your proposal. <laughs> he said what? That he was going to throw himself into Simpson's swamp. But why? 
In your uncle's very own words, Kate's gonna win by a landslide. Kate, I saw the desperation in his eyes. He looked trapped. <laughs> oh, Selma, if anybody but you had told me this, I might believe it. If you choose not to believe me, it's gonna be on your conscience when they fish him out of Simpson's swamp. Well, it's up to you. Good day. Don't believe it. Well, you didn't believe it when Uncle Joe said he'd move out. No, I didn't. I miss him. So do I. So does he. <laughs> he spends all day waiting for Uncle Joe to come home and yell at him for sitting on his rocker. <laughs> Poor little thing. Without Uncle Joe here, he has no one to bug. Well, neither do I. <laughs> Mom, do you really want to be mayor? I never did. But Uncle Joe does. So there's only one thing to do. So I'm announcing that I'm withdrawing from the race in favor of your next mayor, Joe Carson. What? Selma, I did. Oh, hi, Kate. How are you, Your Honor? Huh? Kate just withdrew from the race in favor of you, Joe. Congratulations. Kate, you, you can't do that. <laughs> I thought that was what you wanted. That's what she wanted. Joe promised to marry me if he were elected. What? Kate, you've got to re-enlist. She can't. There's a law in the books that says that once a candidate officially withdraws, he can't re-enter the race. Am I correct, then? The Hooterville Election Code, Section C. Well, who was stupid enough to put a thing like that in the code? I was. <laughs> well, if, if it's a law, it's simple. It's very simple. Uncle Joe, you withdraw, too. Yeah, I... Just a second, there's another law. I figured there'd be. <laughs> it covers breach of promise. Joe Carson, you promised to marry me if you became mayor, and you are mayor, and you can't back out. Selma, while you were browsing through those law books, did you come across anything about the penalty for belting somebody? <laughs> Selma, you ought to know the answer to that one from your first husband. It's 30 days or $30. $30 or 30 days, huh? Sam, would you put that on my bill? Kate, your credit's good with me. Resort to violence if you wish, but I am going to marry the next mayor of Hooterville. What am I going to do? Well, you can stand there contemplating the joys of marital bliss with Selma, or you can hit the campaign trail with me. What are they counting the votes for again? Selma keeps wanting a recount. 39. Count them again. I already counted them eight times. It still comes out the same. Joe got one vote, probably yours, and his opponent got written in on 38 ballots. There's something wrong. It sure is. I only talked to 35 people. <laughs> well, you see, Selma, Kate got me unelected. You can put that bride's outfit back in your hopeless chest. <laughs> Just a second, Uncle Joe. Selma said that she would marry the next mayor of Hooterville. A uh, boys, bring in his honor. <laughs> Selma, I would like you to meet the winner by an overwhelming write-in vote. His honor, the mayor of Hooterville. <laughs> Kate Bradley, you. Make you a fine husband. You'll never have to worry about him running around at night. I'll be glad to perform the ceremony for nothing. And for the honeymoon, may I suggest Simpson Swamp? Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.